which Infiniti QX60 would you option, the V6 or the four-cylinder VC turbocharged engine? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and we're gonna dive into the changes for the 2025 model. Starting in the front, you're gonna notice no differences at all. Standard LED headlights and daytime runnings that go into the enlarged grille, gloss black interior, Infiniti badging, which will not illuminate like the QX80. Front parking sensors on both. This is a Lux and this is an autograph, the same as the Sensory, as well as a 360 degree reverse camera. The Pure will only get a reverse camera. Same clearance, but what's housed underneath the hood is what's going to change everybody's mind. You're getting a V6 when you go into the 24 and under. That's gonna have 295 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque paired to a nine-speed automatic transmission, which in 2017, we increased the horsepower by 30 and increased the torque. And then in 2018, we dropped the hybrid variant, which to me would make more sense that they bring back the hybrid and keep the V6. But towing increased back in 2022 when the full refresh came. And here we have a unique 22 inch wheel. The brake calipers are powder coated. This is not standard. The autograph will be a 20 inch unique wheel. The Sensory is a 20 inch wheel. The Lux will also receive a 20 inch wheel, but the Pure will be a standard 18 inch wheel. And going back to the 25 model, now we're getting the 2.0 liter VC turbocharged four cylinder, which is producing 268 horsepower and 286 pound feet of torque paired to the same nine speed automatic transmission here with the front wheel drive, 22 MPGs for the city, 28 MPGs for the highway, and still accomplishing 6,000 pounds of towing even though it's not the V6 variant, which I'm going to be interested to see how that proje projects over the next couple of years. And if you purchase one, drop a comment and let us know how the towing and the ride is and the performance. And if you are discouraged to purchase one, also drop a comment because either way, I like to see what other people are thinking about this particular vehicle. Because even for me, if I wanted to go into a different Infiniti QX60, now I have to go with this power option, which has a 8.1 compression ratio and going up to a 14.1 compression ratio, which means it will get optimal fuel economy like a four cylinder turbocharged diesel. And then it should perform like a V6, which this is also bigger than the QX50 and QX55 that it derives out of, even though you're getting eight pound feet of torque more, which when we do the drive comparison, I mean, we'll see how much performance difference you get because torque is a big deal when you're going for towing and payload. And also that fun factors, considering how torque happy it is on the QX50 and 55. The lower will have the infinity badging in the matte black. The autograph will get the chrome treatment for the lower skirt and you'll have the two tones so you have the obsidian black on the top and that's really the only way you could tell the difference between trips is when you get into the lux opposed to the pure is you're getting a bigger wheel when you go from the lux to the sensory you're getting some more aesthetics on the exterior some chrome that's going to separate it and when you get to the autograph you're getting a two-tone but going against the comparable rivals it's going to be the least in class in performance for horsepower and torque it's still going to be one of the best in class for towing in payload which again is surprising because of the vc turbocharged engine typically only has an output of 3500 pounds the rear is gonna have the standard LED tail lights. You're gonna have the same configuration for both trims, Infinity Script. The lower is going to be a little bit different because of the color with reverse parking sensors in both with reverse parking sensors and the autograph and sensory will have a digital rear view mirror and the lower will house the fake exhaust outlets and the color will change on the exterior color and because once you go up the tier, you can get some more unique colors. But when you're thinking about the rivals, this is going to be the least in class for pricing with all the amenities that you're getting in luxury. The ride is going to be a little bit more firm, but not as sporty as a Mercedes or BMW. But when you're thinking about Acura, it's gonna be right on par with them unless you're talking about the Type S because we only have one power option in which that's really the problem that I see. Instead of dropping the V6, maybe add a hybrid so that way you can be a little bit more competitive with the Lexus line. Power lift gate, which is on all trims, motion starts on the sensory. Get a 12 volt charger. Underneath the floor is going to have dividers with storage. The spare tire is going to be tucked underneath with cargo starting at 14.5 cubic feet. 
and you can power fold these third row seats down on the sensory. That will increase cargo to 41.6 cubic feet. But unfortunately, you do have to go inside to increase the max cargo at 75.6 cubic feet. They'll fold down flat. So it makes it an easy load at a 60-40 split. Twelve-way power seat adjustment for the driver and passenger. Heated and ventilated front seats. Massage seats start on the sensory memory for the driver. Memory for the driver and passenger starts on the sensory trim. semi aniline leather with the quilted inlays, autograph badging. The same heated, ventilated, and massage with memory for driver and passenger. Since the headroom in both is going to be the same as well as leg space, there's no differences. We're just going to start in the 2025 model. Driver focus setup. This comes standard with wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. You will not get the new QX80 interface with Amazon Alexa and basically the Google Base Drive nor will you get that 3D view. You get a 360 degree reverse camera on both the 23, which has the V6, even the 24. You get the 360 degree reverse camera, full trajectory for the front and the rear. The Pure will just have a reverse camera. 17 speakers start on this trim. Otherwise, nine speakers is going to be on the Pure with tri-climate control settings, standard wireless charging pad, and the key fobs for both and the new 2025, which you can see the difference. I feel it kind of has like that BMW look to it. You have the same schematics here as well as a full pass through and it's soft to touch and it's gonna be the same with a 12 volt card holders, another card holder and a pin holder, leather wrap steering wheel, three spoke multi-function, heated starts on this trim. Leather is standard on all with the paddle shifts. The gauge cluster is a digital reader. You can change the actual design and it can go through an array of information for the driver. And the door for the autograph, you're gonna have the wood that will also be through the dashboard layout as well as the quilted interior. One touch up and down for all the windows with the same size storage pocket. For the second row, here's where you're gonna see a difference. Headroom, legroom, plus you can fit a third occupant, storage behind both of the front seats, cup holders with armrests, third climate control, heated rear seats, USB ports, leather appointed seats is going to be in the second row, air vents in the ceiling, and the panel goes to the second row as well as the manual sun shades, which is going to be the same in the autograph, except for the interior, you're getting that wood instead of the aluminum mesh, soft to touch cup holders. And what I was saying is these are captain seats. So you actually sit downwards a little bit. You can also adjust both of these forward, backwards and recline. You'll have some cup holders in storage with a home plug. Whereas on the Lux, we have the bench. So you can fit a third occupant here Headroom though is a little bit undesirable for somebody at six foot three. Both trims to enter to the back, you push the button and it slides forward, giving us room for two more occupants with a storage tray, USB ports, cup holders on one side with air vents in the ceiling. The autograph will give it to you on both sides. You do lose the quilted pattern for the third row. Headroom will be the same, except legroom is gonna be different because we have captain seats opposed to a full bench in the same headroom for the back seats. The VC turbocharged engine. Is it going to be enough compared to the V6 engine? That's what we are looking to accomplish because spec to spec wise, unless you are getting a lower trim, they're going to be identical except for 25 you get a few more features when you go into the Lux, like the upgraded sound system and they also offer the walk away now meaning you can leave the key in your pocket and walk away from the vehicle and lock and automatically unlock for you power we're going to put it in a sport get her up onto the interstate
because the torque is so much, it does feel a little bit more lively whenever you're going at a higher speed. At a lower speed, you'll feel more of a jerk. The pedal doesn't necessarily feel heavy. There is definitely some turbo lag, and I would say you really need to hit more of the two and a half to three RPM, which the vehicle is going to do that pretty much all the time in order for it to get up to speed which is going to take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros is for the value, you're getting a great bang for your buck. Considering all the rivals, it's going to be more money to get similar features which you get with Infinity. On a con, you do have to go into the Lux in order to get a lot of the features though because the Pure is not going to give you the upgraded wheels. You will get standard wireless charging pad and you'll get standard USB ports found throughout, but you still have to go up to different tiers in order to get USB ports even in the third row. The drive is going to be a little bit more rigid than some of the competition, meaning the Germans really, as for its competition, I feel like Lexus will be the most soft in class. Visibility is good. This is definitely a great daily drive vehicle. The interior, the seats are soft. When you get into the autograph, it's going to be the most soft appointed seats because you have the Anna, Anna line, semi -Anna, because you'll have the semi-aniline leather appointed seats for the first and second row, but then you're losing the pattern in the third row. There isn't any option for heated third row seats. And even if you go into the 25 model, which sadly I would hope that I would see some of these changes implemented because we are starting to see them in the QX80. I understand this is not as big as that vehicle, but it would be nice that they implement some of the same features that they are putting into that tier into this to give a different option. But going back to the main question, which one is better? Let's get into the V6 and see the difference. And now the V6 A sound that I'm used to hearing since the vehicle has come out, getting up onto the interstate. Here is where you're going to feel a major difference between the VC turbocharged engine in this V6 variant, because obviously a turbocharged, you're already spooled up so you can get optimal performance and it will kick you back because you also have 14 pound-feet of torque more than the V6. Because we have 22 inch wheels, I always have that question of, does it change the ride? Is different when you're optioning or changing your wheels to this size is the road noise. You can hear a huge increase. I would say at least two to three decimals more than using the 20 inch wheels that come with it. But for me, it's also a style preference. I don't mind the sporty drive because I drive a sports car normally. And with the V6, it feels just a little bit more solid than that VC turbocharged four cylinder. Whenever I'm mashing on the gas, it just has a different feel to it. You'll notice it right off the bat. On stop and go traffic, you'll notice it a little bit more so. There is some fun factors to that because of the turbo, but I feel like it could have been a mistake because it would be better just to option or have a hybrid variant instead of going turbocharged four and dropping the six. And as for MPG purposes, I mean, I was averaging about 19.2 and I had the vehicle for quite a while doing different driving maneuvers for the test before even recording. And with my personal one, I averaged 21.1 MPGs combined. Now this is an all wheel drive opposed to a front wheel drive configuration. And going into some pros with the V6 variant, meaning 24 and under, as long as you get a 22 to 24 model, I feel like you're not going to have any hesitation in the sense of which one should I option because nine speed automatic transmission, the interior is going to be by whichever trim level you go to. If you go into the 20 and under, you might be kind of concerned with the CVT transmission. I personally had my second one up to 175,000 miles, never had to replace the CVT transmission. I did have to replace a few components. You can ask me in the comments and I'll elaborate a little bit more so. 
so but overall it was a solid vehicle that's why i ended up buying a third infinity but looking at a 25 model i don't feel the same with the vc turbocharged engine not quite yet i'm just not sold on it but let me know what you would do in the comments and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing check out the next video merchandise website and instagram leave a comment and a like and i'd like to thank infinity of clearwater for giving us this comparison review between the infinity qx60 v6 and the new vc turbocharged four-cylinder engine